Keith Ian Wanyango, I'm a finalist student of law at uh, the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Oh, my name is Atuti Mukaya. I'm a law student at JKU Art University current campus. My name is uh, Ayo Stanley Asembo, a student of law in Jebat Karen, and uh, I hail from CIA. My name is B. Boss Komasinde, B for Boss. I am a final student at KCS University pursuing accounting. My name is Moses Kiamatomo, a fourth year law student in Jebat Karen. My name is Ian Lemayanienko. My name is KK Mbogo, Elias Bafa, Elias Ole, Elias Oyakiwe, most eligible bachelor. I am Odindo Yoga. My name is Munyo Ngege. I'm Oreri Wamagembe, J. I'm a student of law at Jekwat Karen Campus. My preferred presidential candidate is Raila Molo Odinga. Before the running match, and it's a decision that uh, I came to, I came to about uh, six months ago. And my reasons are that um, when uh, you're going to the ballot, there are certain things you check in a presidential candidate. You check credibility and you check whether he's a man who can put the country first. You put Raila on one side and uh, you know when you're talking about presidential candidates, it's important that we be specific. Let's uh, look at the top two contenders because they are the ones who will uh, most likely win this election. Mm -hmm. You look at Raila Odinga, you look at his history, you look at William Ruto, you look at his history. My preferred presidential candidate is none other than Right Honourable Raila Amolo Odinga and the uh, party leader of Azimio, Lomoza. Raila Amolo Odinga, mm -hmm. yeah, I believe uh, he has uh, glaring uh, significant credentials is a man of valor, good candor, and uh, undefeating uh, stature, which I believe is really consequential. My preferred presidential candidate is the current Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, uh, William Samoy Arapruto. Uh, he has a good track record, uh, way back from being the Member of Parliament of Eldoret North, uh, serving as an agriculture minister in the government, the Grand Coalition government, uh, under Right Honorable Raila Odinga and former president, uh, Hayati Mze Mwaikibaki. Preferred presidential candidate is His Excellency William Samoy Arapruto. Uh, I think the stars are finally aligned for Raila Odinga. Uh, we have been supporting him since 2007, 2013, 2017. But I'm sure this time round he's going to get it. My preferred presidential candidate, as much as the Kenya's preferred presidential candidate, is Raila Muludinga, Jacom. My preferred presidential candidate is a uh, Right Honorable Raila Muludinga. It's important we acknowledge and we admit that as a country we have failed on certain things and we have a tribal problem. The answer is straight and simple. I wouldn't buy in that place because we have a tribal problem. Well, first of all, uh, we're living in a tribalistic uh, era, and we have some parameter, some measures of tribalism in our in our systems. So I think that is one thing that might uh, hinder me or buffer me from going and vying for political office in some regions. The politics is at the center stage, and at the very core of the politics in this country. Look at how the political parties are organized. They are tribal political parties. Look at ODM, look at ANC, look at DAP, the recently formed DAP, look at UDA. I think it will be so sweeping to say that I can't vie in Northeastern where us haven't made an attempt because I can't know the waters unless I've dipped my toes in them. I cannot purport to say that I know the challenges going on in Kitui right now. Maybe they have water shortages, maybe in Narok we have a lot of rains. Being a citizen of Narok has given me an opportunity to be able to understand the specific problems that they do face. That idea of maybe just have to be from the, your homeland, you can't buy from or buy for a place that is not your homeland, is maybe because the, we assume you know much more about your homeland, uh, the issues and the problems they face and the change you want to put in that place more than another place.
extrajudicial killings uh, reflect that our justice system does have a challenge. Uh, I, I must mention the case of Msando. You know? Msando is one case that has been very uh, quite uh, has drawn so many controversies, you know, in our judicial system and everything. How people just uh, disappear, they enforce disappearances and everything. So, Sandro's case might be quite uh, of concern. The reason why we feel and we find that extrajudicial killing find its way through our system is because of polarized security systems and polarized social justice system. Extrajudicial killing, meaning there is a government element in the killing. In fact, it should not be the extrajudicial killing, it should be extrajudicial murder. When you use murder, we bring the aspect of malice more clearly as opposed to killing. One of the most heart-wrenching incidences was when one of our fellow lawyers, Mr. Willie Kimani, was killed together with his client and a driver. They were killed me basically because they were taking a case to court, a case involving police officers. The police officers, instead of waiting for the rule of law to take its course, they decided to take the law into their own hands. Currently in Kenya, we have faced so many extrajudicial killings and uh, it's not something good, it's not a good picture for us. But uh, I'm sure with time, we are, going, we are taking steps by step, but I'm sure we're going to reach there. Uh, the reforms that need to be done, uh, it's just about the judiciary, because the judiciary has the final say in matters of crimes. So we have to, I think we have to tighten the belt in the, in the judiciary. You have to choose the best judges, judges who are of integrity. And uh, another thing I think we have, to, we have to set a time limit for the cases concerning judicial killings. Uh, job, 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 job. The best effective way of empowering the youth is giving them opportunities. Uh, we have a lot of youths in our country. They occupy basically a large structure of us. And the best way that we can be able to empower them is give them opportunities. We are a hardworking nation. We are a nation that is zealous about the future. The problem is that the opportunities that we get are minimal. We have a lot of potential in us as the youth. I think uh, we should be looking at the youth empowerment in a, in a more objective way. An empowered youth is someone who is having a knowledge and can use that knowledge to get something to help the particular youth. We cannot be having youth empowerment, we are talking about giving handouts, giving you 100,000 to go and start a business. We have empowered you, but if you don't have the necessary skills to go and start that business and manage the business, that is not youth empowerment. Kenyan youth suffer from uh, ignorance. Ignorance, when you take away ignorance from the youth, you will have empowered them. The first step of empowering them is taking away the ignorance in youth. You will find that Kenyan youth don't really care about who is in the leadership position. And what they don't realize is that whoever is in the leadership position will determine how their standards of living will be, whether they love a job or not. It is true that this country has, has an economic problem. But the problem, economic problem in this country, it is not between economic classes. The economic problem in this country, it is because of joblessness, and it is because, it is because of, um, it's because of, uh, the country has been put in a position where it has to borrow more outside of this country. And